Hey guys, it's the Paylor here, and today I want to talk about my 100% modular trench table. It's an ongoing project that I've had for literally years. I haven't touched it for about three years, and yeah, I've put a lot of work into what's already there. Uh, me and a friend, I had a, a close friend of mine, helped me with a lot of it. We worked out jigs and stuff so that we could make our lives easier. I built a hot wire cutter, like a, a foam factory. Uh, myself, I built it and then used it to cut all this stuff. And yeah, the, the amount of work that's gone into it already is insane. By the time it's finished, it's going to be even better. Uh, I've learned how to make flock, make clump. All the stuff that I'm doing terrain-wise has been for this, so that I could do this and finish this. But I'm going to talk about what's on there, what I've done, how I've done it, and hopefully it's informative for you guys. I'm not going to be showing you guys me working on it because I haven't got time at the moment, but I'm working on other stuff. But this is something that I need to go back to and it's in the pipeline, I'm gonna get stuff done. I just wanted to show you guys it because I'm really proud of what it is so far. And then at the end, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Let me know if you have thought about trying something like this but haven't had any idea how and this might be informative for you, let me know. Uh, if you like it, if you don't like it, let me know in the comments and I'll get into it basically. <laughs> so this is my modular trench table. It is 100% modular. Every other section lines up with every other section in any combination, doesn't matter which way it's facing. That in itself was a whole lot of work. The tiles themselves are 12 inch square MDF with high density styrofoam on top of them. I built a hot wire cutter so that I could actually, or built a foam cutting factory so that I could cut them and just using the edge of the MDF as a guide, I cut them flush with the edge and it's done a pretty damn good job of lining them all up. Uh, some of them just need to be like pushed together or depending on whether or not the table's got a bit of a bow in it, like over here, this elevation here, that gap is only happening because of this and it's a little bit off cut, but yeah, definitely close enough that I'm happy with it. I don't want to be dicking around and like adding more to it, a lot more hassle than it's worth. Uh, you can see I've spackled some of them just to add a bit of coagulation and I've got timbers on a lot of it, but I'm actually gonna change the way that I'm doing it. <laughs> so change my mind about how I want it to look. I don't want it to look like an actual trench uh, battle is going on. I wanna have it so that it's 50, 60 years after the battle so that it's all gonna be overgrown, lush looking and like I'll have like things being collapsed or folded in on. I've got to attack these edges so that they're not quite so rigid. But yeah, it's gonna look really, really cool once it's all finished. For scale, some jean stealers and some tank busters. So once they're actually in the trench, just so you get an idea of the scale, this is how deep the trench is. They just disappear. You know, terminators stand in there and they just disappear. I have played a number of games on this and combat armies do a whole lot better thanks to the trenches. But shooty armies can still stand a chance. It's still good. You just gotta pick your battles, really. Adding extra terrain to it. I've got flat sections that sit over the bits that meet in the middle so that you can have a, this big section in the middle of just flat terrain. I've got the blank tiles. I've got, actually got four of these. They can sit anywhere as well, just to break it up a bit, so it's not all trench. Again, something that can just get covered by a bit of scatter. Going to the corner pieces, or the, the flat tiles, they've got the tunnels, or holes in them, so they can actually line them up. And have it so that you can go in one end in one turn, go out another end in another, or play it however you want. Play as a bunker, or that kind of style. But yeah, super, super happy with how everything looks at the moment. Hours and hours have gone into it. Uh, beautiful things in hindsight, when we actually put it together, me and my friend Brad, uh, we had this magnet system set up so that it'd be a screw would meet a magnet on every section, on every side of every tile. And after we put them on a table, we realized we don't actually need them at all. So hindsight's a beautiful thing, <laughs> but yeah, 
It was, it was funny when we figured it out. So it, it really doesn't move. It's not going anywhere. So you could do the magnets if you end up doing something like this. Let me know in the comments if you thought about doing something like this and didn't know how. It's really... So it's hard because it takes so long. The actual work itself, you just got to think it out, really. It's just having accurate measurements, clean cuts, and just think before you do shit. And it comes up looking really, really good. But yeah, definitely happy with how everything looks. Now, I've added the floor sections. So given it a bit of, a little bit of elevation from the MDF. So you can see without the spackle or filler, it's just cut sections of foam that I've stuck down and then adding the spackle and the filler just to fill in those gaps. It all ties it up really nicely. I have been doing, as I said, been doing the flock, been doing the static. As I said, I've been doing the flock, been doing the clumping and working on all of my other terrain stuff so that I can figure out how I'm going to attack this and actually get this done. But yeah, hopefully in the near future, I'll start doing a lot more work on this. I'm thinking that I'm probably gonna just gonna build up a big grit mix that's gonna have paint, PVA and grit. So either sand or small rocks and whatever else and use that to have the coagulation instead of the spackle that I'm using because once this stuff dries, if it hasn't got enough PVA in it, you find out very quickly because it just starts flaking away. Some of the tiles, you'll see that's exactly what's happened because I didn't have the PVA in the mix. And then other tiles I did have and they're quite sturdy, really strong. Super happy with them, but it's an absolute fortune for this spackle stuff that I was using. So I'm thinking paint, PVA and sand is probably a better way to do it. After I get everything together, it's all going to have, I'll just paint these. Uh, so like paint them with black paint so that they all slot together. Or I'll either go black or grey, I think, so that you don't really notice them when they're sitting. If there is any gaps, you shouldn't notice them too much. Or it might even be a really dark green, depending on how the flocking turns out. But yeah. Hopefully you guys like my trench table. And hopefully you guys let me know in the comments whether or not you have ever wanted to build something like this. Or if you have built something like this, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss an upload. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching guys.